Oh yeah. Oh, hey, uh, hi. Uh, so um, I'm here today to present about one of the hidden gems that I found out during Hacktoberfest. It's called Co. To so uh, before we begin, uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Stanley. I'm currently working for Zendit. We're building payment infrastructure for Southeast Asia. Uh, in my free time, I help co-organize Go Singapore as well, and I deliver my application to with Go and Note using uh, Docker and Kubernetes. Yep. So logistic out of the way. Uh, what is Go exactly? Uh, Go is a tool for building and deploying Go application to Kubernetes. Uh, it's built around Go import path convention, which I will explain later how it's how is mirror that, uh, but before that, let's take a deep dive into the problem that is made for. So I'm um, assuming that most of us in the audience would be familiar with, the, with containerization and Docker. For those who don't know co what containerization is, it's basically a technique of bundling all your application components with its dependencies and configuration and runtime, etc., in a self-contained modules to be run in a host machine. So the basic process of dockerizing a Go application is to deploy on into Kubernetes is first to uh, build, go build, then go, then Docker build, and then you push that Docker image to a repository, to a Docker repository, and then you can finally uh, cube control apply into your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so fast forward to the age of microservices, we have to manage like tons and tons of different builds. Each one. Each one has its own sets of Docker files. Things start to grow out of control and with lots and lots of configurations in forms of Docker files and YAML files. Uh, now, some of you might be thinking that tools like scaffold or make file can wrap this process of, for different languages and Docker files to make process, this process more manageable and faster. But uh, as application developers, we would still need to write a lot of uh, Docker files and typically more JAMU files to describe the orchestration. Uh, there's a pattern here that I have observed for optimization and development effort. It's a major pain point that uh, Dockerization is too invasive in my development environment, requiring a lot of effort for configuration. Uh, I'm not saying that this is uh, not necessary though, uh, because at times we need to carefully handcraft our Docker files for like customization for business requirements. Uh, but at other times, mostly my apps are de delivered in the same build configurations for majority of the microservices. So code is targeting to solve problems for this group of users by providing a way to eliminate needs for build and deploy configuration to eventually make containers invis invisible infrastructures. And one less thing that application developers like us uh, worry about. <clears throat> so this is a new model of our deployment process that Co is constructing. Instead of having multiple Docker files, building images from each one of them and pulling from the published repo and deploy to Kubernetes cluster, we just need a one-liner that will handle everything to get our microservices up and running in the clusters. Mm, this is particularly useful for Knative because you have like a very large number of containerized images. And as a matter of fact, Co was actually made for Knative. But, uh, and, and it used to live inside one of the Knative repositories before being extracted out into a separate repo as a standalone tool. Okay, cool, so that is the problem that Core is trying to solve. So how does Core achieve this zero config deployment workflow? So it links into the Go idioms of, to simplify the whole process and eliminate configurations. In the same way that Go get command install binaries into your local machine using import path, uh, Go use Go import path to refer to the command that would start your containers. So our concerns are now simplified from Docker build. Docker push plus Docker publish Kubernetes applies into just code. Uh, so I'm gonna go into some of the components that make code possible and also its features. Uh, code publishes, code publish simply builds and publishes images for each import path. 
pass as an argument. The main function of the program must be in the path for Go to build and publish a Go Docker containers that contain the binaries. Go publish also support relatives import path uh, in the context of a Go path repo. So where does Go publish this image to? Uh, it will publish to a local Docker repo by default, but uh, we can we can set that by using this uh, environment variable Go Docker repo. So the reason that uh, it's being extracted into a environment variable is because for different developers or like different build environment, we want to publish into different Docker repositories. So this should be an environment variable for that reason. So the next component is code resolve. So it will basically take a Kubernetes YAML file in the same way as uh, K apply and then determines the Go path to build, Dockerize and publish. So the output of this is not to apply on a Kubernetes cluster, but to output a string of, of uh, concatenated YAML with pass, go pass replaced by uh, the published image uh, hash digest, sorry. Yeah, so the final piece of the puzzle is go apply. So it's basically parallel to uh, k apply if you use Kubernetes, uh, acting on the same output from go, res go resolve. So as developer make changes in their go application, they can just do a go apply to to rapidly rebuild and repush and redeploy into their development clusters. And uh, last but not least, we have go delete, which is a convenient wrapper for k delete. Yeah. Uh, okay. So while co aims to be to have zero config, there are times where we would still want to override some of the default behaviors. So this is this is where uh, co jamo comes in handy. Mm, in co jamo, we have two options. Just to, yeah, we try to have the least configuration as possible. So the first one is default base image. Uh, by default, Go would build its image just from uh, a distro less uh, image. And, but then we can replace that with a, a, a base image of our choice. Or we can even overwrite for each of the import path individually. Uh, so now uh, some of you might be wondering that we, how do we include static assets into our application? Because that's important, isn't it? So code data path environment variable is the answer to this. Uh, all content inside this uh, path will be copied into your images and make available under the same environment variable. So uh, this is actually another Go idiom. It draws from the same idiom as Go test data. So uh, where test data will be included and made available for Go test, Go data is included and made available for Go deploy applications. Yeah, so uh, let's go into the cool stuff demo. Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, okay, so uh, what my demo is is I have five application in my clusters that I'm gonna deploy using Docker first, Docker and Kube, Kube control first. And then I will show you how to do the same thing. In so each of my services are each of my services have has a deployment from from these are. Uh, with this Go application and then expose through a service. So uh, to deploy this application first, okay, hang on. I will need to do a, oh. Oh, it's already. I need to do a Docker build uh, and tag it with my The, the image that I want to publish as. Is it clear the text? I, 
I think if I change it to hang on let me just change it to my Be good, right? Oh, shoot. Okay. Is it better now? Nice. All right. Okay. So basically, it's building the Halo Earth image. And then, okay. Oh, so let me just go through each of the Docker files. So this, this is like my handcrafted Docker file that I normally use to deploy my non my my conventional doc, docker image for go application yeah so while it's publishing i'm just gonna quickly go through the application so this app basically serve a html string and an image so even in my docker view um, i'm i'm trying to mirror the code data path uh it's just because i'm lazy and i don't want to <laughs> Write two different, two different static config for each. Okay, so now we can Docker publish. Uh, oh shit! A Docker push. Sorry. Uh, then, uh, because these these are very tedious. I'm just gonna run a make file that will build and push all of these images. So, yeah, it's building. I think I can start singing as this is taking forever. <laughs> so, uh, just showing you all that. Let me just open my... Let me just open my Docker Hub and show you all the published image. Yes. So all my images are being published here. Oh, I think they are published. Are they? Are they all published? Oh, still one more, I think. Come on, come on. Sorry, I should have reduced it to three services. <laughs> you publishing. Yeah, so uh, just showing you that there's no pre-push images, so I'm, I'm actually doing everything from scratch. Yeah. Lucky that my images are light, so you don't have to like, wait another hour. <laughs> Okay, cool. So all the p images have been published. Now I can do a mean a a k apply. Oh, I'm using mini cube behind the scene by the way. Yeah. But I just started it like before the talk because it takes forever to start. Cool. So I have all my services up and running. Now I'm going to show you uh Okay. Oh shit, sorry. All my services are up and running, so I will open one of them. Earth, probably. 
Let's travel to Earth. Oh shit. Why is it not? Hmm. Oh yes. It worked. So, but that was lots and lots of effort, right? Okay, now I'm gonna bring down everything and show you how I can I could do that with coal. So all of those uh, all of those handcrafted Docker image and hard work in publishing can be saved with coal. Okay, and I don't even need my Docker demons to be running. Fun fact. Yeah, I'm gonna do a code apply. F. Oh yeah, so I'm showing you my co co power Kubernetes YAML. So I'm using my import path here. Yeah, let's go. Oh sorry. So it's right now it's running co-publish. So if you run co-publish, you would get these same uh, messages publishing to these. And then these images are being published here. Oh, not up yet. Sorry. Okay. What happened? Oh no. Sorry, Murphy's Law. What? Awesome. Am I being blocked by the Wi Fi or something? Yeah, but somehow. Oh man. I already log in right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. Maybe I need this running now that I'm trying to publish to Docker Hub. Can't run from it after all, maybe. <clears throat> but yeah, bas uh, code doesn't need Docker demons to be running to build it, it, its image because it's basically uh, uh, compressing the image by itself without using any Docker functionalities. Yeah, hopefully it works. Ah, shoot. Okay, I'm go I'm gonna publish to my local local Docker repo instead. Now that it's not working with the remote one. Oh no, I'm I'm it's okay. I will just demonstrate using my local Docker repo.
Okay. Cool. So everything is, all the deployment has been created. If I get service, all of my application are being run. And I can, I would get the same. Let's travel to Venus. Yep. So with Go, it's just a one liner. Okay. Uh, I had some trouble, but if you count from where I when I publish to local repo, then yeah, it's just a one liner, and then your you have your uh, you have your cluster up and running. So I I think this is quite useful for me if I'm trying to like mirror the behavior of my remote clusters in my local. So like I can quickly like rebuild and and get everything running in with without like much build push and all that yeah so it can make make my development uh faster i i would use this for my development but uh, for actual deployment i i don't know about your technical requirements to recommend yeah but yep that's cool so uh any questions <laughs> Sorry? Oh, for Go? Yeah. Actually, uh, for Go, you can just install it using Go Get, uh, and then, yeah, I'm, I must show you. It's, a, it's written in Go, so it's pretty straightforward to, to just Go Get to install the command. And you have everything, yeah, it's a Go application. I mean, Go command line application, yeah. But yeah, you just need to do this, and you're done. No, so like, yeah, we, they try to make it as simple as possible. So like, to get it up and running and everything. So for the benefit of the online audience who might not be reading the chat, we do have half a dozen watchers. Uh, any questions for Stanley? You can put directly into the chat. All right. Uh, oh, okay, cool. None. Brilliant. <laughs> and no questions in the room? Stunned silence. It's so awesome, there's nothing left to ask. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Stanley. All right.